When you paint with brushes in Illustrator, you're actually considering two different features, the brush tool and the brush library. So we're going to explore both of those in this next exercise. Here we go. Well, let's start with the brush tool. And we have it over here. We've got paint brush tool and you can access it with the letter B. And you click on it and you start painting and you get these nice, clean, fun lines. Now, part of that has to do with the brush options. If you double click, you can actually find some of these options in here. And fidelity has to do with how smooth the curve is going to be. The higher the fidelity, the smoother the line is going to be. It means there's fewer anchor points. Now let's go ahead and try this and we'll do kind of the same brush stroke. And it may be hard to see, but if I go ahead and get my selection tool here, or my direct selection tool, let's try that one. You can see this only has two anchor points where the other ones had a few extra. And so it's actually changing the curve. Let's go ahead and really change it where we go to the fidelity and make it down to the smallest number. It's almost zero. And you can see there's a lot more points. One of the reasons though it looks so smooth is because of the actual brush that's using this calligraphic brush that just makes everything look pretty. That's one of the reasons I like drawing with the paintbrush. Now in addition to fidelity there's also a smoothness and the fidelity is going to make the biggest change if you start dragging that's going to be the most dramatic but the smoothness plays in with it and it actually will smooth out the lines as you're drawing them. Now you can actually experiment with these and always reset it goes back to the defaults with Illustrator so it's a nice thing to experiment with. Um, by default the brushes once you draw them will deselect and you can see when I'm going here and drawing a brush, it's no longer selected. But sometimes you want to have it keep selected, and that's because you can edit selected paths. And here's what that means. If I go ahead and draw, and then I draw again, I'm actually editing this path because it's selected. Now if I get far enough away, I'm going to create a new, completely new path. And I could also select something with my control key here, and then start editing it. And those, again, are all parts of these settings in here. And we also had one about filling the stroke. This number 12 has to do with how close you have to be to the path in order to edit it. I'm going to go ahead and reset everything. So now our brush is set up. When you paint with the brush, it's also using a particular brush definition. And right now, if I click on the drop down, I can actually see some of these brushes that are built in. And we have some different types of brushes here. These are um, calligraphic brushes, and there's also different kinds of brushes. You can also access them through the brushes panel. In fact, let's just pull this whole panel out so it's easier to see. And we can just expand it so we can see all these options in here. And one of the things that's different about drawing with the brush versus the pencil is when I draw the pencil, it defaults to this basic. And the basic is going to give you a lot of options, uh, but it doesn't have the fun definitions that the brush has. Um, sometimes though when you draw with the brush, after you draw with it, you're going to need to reset it back to basic in order to take advantage of some of the features that you want to use in Illustrator. Or sometimes you take advantage of the features and Illustrator will strip it back down to basic brush. So just be aware of that, of the, the paths in there. But by default, whenever you draw, even if you've chosen a brush such as basic here, and you start clicking on the paintbrush, you can see how it defaults back to a brush definition in here. Now you can choose the color that you want to use, the stroke color, when you're drawing. And if I pick a fill color here and I draw, it's not picking it up, but remember that's actually because of the options that we have set. Okay, so now we've got some different brushes and we can actually experiment with different types of brushes. So I'm going to choose this charcoal feather brush here. And I can create kind of a mountain look. And what you're seeing are some, some samples of brushes, but there's a lot more. And if we go to the libraries down here, we can access different libraries of brushes. So we have some arrow brushes. And I'm going to use the next arrow to just see what else is available. It tells you up there, too, what kind of brush it is. A calligraphic brush. And 
And if we take a closer look at our drop down here with the brushes panel, we'll see there's actually five different kinds of brushes. There are calligraphic brushes, scatter brushes, art brushes, bristle, and pattern brushes. And these are different ways of applying your, your shapes. So I'm going to go over and go to this option and explore with some different types of brushes. So let's start actually with some the differences between our scatter, art, and pattern brushes. So I've already set up a brush that's a scatter brush. And I'm going to go ahead and select this. And these, this is a type of scatter brush. And actually, the other one is a scatter brush too, which is different settings. But what it's doing is it's kind of randomly putting it around the edge. And depending on the settings, it could be um, sort of close to the edge, or it could be very varied. But when we use a, a pattern brush, it's going to look very similar but it tends to have an even alignment around the edge. And even when I compare this, there is a little bit of variation, whereas the pattern brush attempts to be very even. Now an art brush is going to stretch it. You can see how it does that with art brush. And then some of the art brushes are going to stretch them. Let me change the color here so it's easier to see. This one has a tint option in there. And I can also make it larger. Some of the art brushes are going to stretch it, but even when they stretch it, they'll still um, have some elements that don't stretch. And if we were to come back and do some lines, let me go ahead and remove some of these objects in here. If we were to do some simple lines, here's the paintbrush, and I start applying my line up here. Let's do a blue with a larger size. Whoop, make sure it's selected. Sometimes I forget to select these, especially since it got deselected. So you can see here how it's applying that brush, or I have some other types of art brushes that sometimes will stretch out depending on how it's set up. Now as we go through and we'll start seeing some different types of brushes in here, you can really see some fun effects. And every time you click on a brush, it's actually adding it to your library as a copy. So the, the libraries preserve a clean version of these brushes, and then you have your own option. All right, now we're getting to the bristle brush, and this is actually its own library. And the bristle brush gives you brushes that simulate natural brushes, so it's a great way of, of drawing as if you're going to be drawing with pen and paper or pencil and paper, and you want to create some effect. Um, so for example, I could use the bristle brush right here, this default one, and get a green color. Maybe I want to do some trees. And you can see how it's creating a much more um, natural looking, or perhaps even just um, like, a, like a paint brush as opposed to something like a drawn. And if I start experimenting with different brushes, you can actually see the types of brushes that they have by the heads. That the, the, when I'm hovering over it, what I'm really getting is a name, but you can see by the icon the way the brush is going to look. Now these brushes blend together as if you were painting with watercolor. So as I'm doing individual strokes, they're actually going together. Now if I did something where I'm not letting go of my mouse, it creates one line. But if I did several strokes together, they start blending together. So the technique of how you draw actually makes a difference. If I go ahead and do the outline view, control Y, you can see that these are many different strokes. But they're starting to overlap on each other. And I could even create some other one. Let's try a, a trunk. Oops, make sure I have the tool here. And there we go. So you can have some fun options with these brushes. Now, in addition to all these wonderful brushes that you have, there is another brush I want to point out. It's called the blob brush. And this has been around for a little bit. The bristle brush was actually introduced in CS5. The blob brush was from CS4. But the blob brush actually plays a little different. It's a little bit more like creating pathfinder tools because it allows you to create fills rather than strokes. And if I wanted to create something like a lake, I could create the color that I want. And just like in Photoshop, I can increase the brush size by using the bracket keys. The bracket keys are next to the letter P on your keyboard. And the left bracket is going to make it smaller. The right bracket is going to make it bigger. 
And if I start painting here, okay, now remember I'm changing my stroke color, but if I go to the control Y, you can actually see it's filling that in, almost like a create outline effect, and I can fill that in. You can also use the blob brush to merge objects. So if I had created two circles and perhaps filled them with similar colors, and so they do need to have a color, and the other trick is no stroke. But there they are, there's two circles here, and they're both selected. Here's my blob brush, and I have the same color. And as I start working, I'm actually blending these together, creating my own shape. And if I do a control Y, you can see how they're blended together with the blob brush. The blob brush also has its own options. If you double click on it, you can make some changes in here. And some of the options that you can do are changing the size and angle and roundness. And so if I were to change the angle, it's going to be at a curve, kind of like the way calligraphy brushes or calligraphic brushes are. And I can also change the roundness and it's starting to look more like a calligraphic brush. It's also set up as fixed. If I were to make this random, then as we are playing with the brush, it'll actually shift on us. Let's try some different variations. Okay. And you can see when I start painting here, especially if I resize the brush, make it smaller, and you can start seeing some playing. Now, actually, the antithesis of the blob brush is the eraser. And if you use a stylus pen, you can simply flip your pen over and it turns into an eraser tool. But if you're using the mouse like I am, you can click the eraser and you can essentially erase what you just painted. But again, it's in that smooth feature. And of course, the eraser has very similar features to the blob brush. So as you're painting in Illustrator, take advantage of the brush tool, but realize it's actually several tools. There's the brush, or the blob brush, and then all the different brush definitions that you can take advantage of as well.